Good morning, Reunion. My name is Clayton. I'm one of the pastors on staff here, and I am so glad that you joined us online this morning. Reunion is a family of churches throughout the Boston area with the simple mission of helping people find their way back to God. Before we move on with this digital gathering, let me remind you of just a couple of things. First, I'd love for you to invite others to this online gathering. To do that, simply click the share button below this video to share this with a neighbor, a family member, a coworker, or a friend, because chances are you know someone else who could use a message of hope and encouragement during this season. So go ahead and invite them. For those of you who are brand new to Reunion, let me be the first one to welcome you. Uh, we are so glad that you found us online. My hope is that this community can be a family for you, right? A place where you will feel a sense of belonging and where you can find people, a community of people who will walk alongside you on your faith journey. It's been so great to see so many new people get connected to us recently. So if that's you, if you're new to our community, I would love for you to go to our website, reunionmovement.com and click on the chat bubble in the bottom right-hand corner that says connect with us. Uh, you can do that, or you can also just use your phone to scan the QR code on your screen right now, and that will take you to that same connection card. If you do that, we will reach out to you uh, to help you find out more about us, more about our community, and help you get plugged in, connected into the Reunion family. Uh, you can also follow us on social media. That's Facebook and Instagram. And of course, if you have something that you need prayer for, please, please email prayer at reunionboston.com. Our staff and our elders would love to pray for you. This morning, as we move on with our, our digital gathering, we're going to have a time of worship followed by a short message. And after that, we will close with a time of communion and benediction. So with that said, let's worship together. There is no shadow that has ever overcome your light. There is no stand against your might you've always been with us every battle you've already won we've already won there is no weapon that has ever left a mark on you there is no the power to conquer truth you've always been with us every battle you've already won we've already won show me one thing you can't do show me a mountain you can't move he's the god of the breakthrough and anything is possible Disappointment and break every chain. All of my 
fear I will turn into praise Shake off despair as I sing out your name A victory dance, I will dance out in faith I'll crush disappointment and break every chain Oh, all of my fear I will turn into praise Shake off despair as I sing out your name A victory dance, I will dance out in faith I'll crush disappointment here, I have some announcements for you today. Generosity is a core value at Reunion. We give in response to the generosity of God. Your financial giving and investment in our church allows Reunion to accomplish our mission of helping people find their way back to God. It also allows us to support ministry partners, organizations both local and global, who work to meet needs related to food security, fostering and adoption, education, housing the homeless, and racial reconciliation. 
When you give, it helps us sustain these essential ministries so they can flourish too. To give right now, follow the link in the chat or use the QR code on the screen. Thank you for being so generous. It has been so great to be able to meet in person outdoors this summer. Our rhythm for the summer is for the first Sunday of the month to be online only and then to rotate our physical gatherings each week between Quincy, Southend, and Somerville. We look forward to celebrating and worshiping together with you soon, so mark your calendar for our upcoming gatherings. Regardless of what location you normally call home, we want you to come to as many of these gatherings as you can. We will still continue to post digital gatherings like this throughout the summer in case you are unable to be with us in person. As the summer is coming to an end and our staff and elders are working hard on what our fall and winter gatherings will look like, we would love it if you could take just a few minutes to fill out our regathering survey. Your answers will provide valuable insight for us as we work towards getting back to weekly indoor gatherings. To take the survey, simply click on the link in the chat. Thank you for your feedback. Lastly, we are excited to say that Reunion Life Communities will be kicking off for the fall season on the week of September 19th. If Reunion is a big church family, then Life Communities are like your immediate family. These are the people who will celebrate with you when everything is going great and who will also support you when life isn't so fun. For me, I attend the North End Community Group. And while none of us live nor meet in the North End anymore, it has continued to be a source of joy and support in the past year and a half. So if you are new to Reunion, or if you've been around for a while but still feel new, now is a great time to get plugged in. If you would like to get connected into a live community, simply text CONNECT to the number on the screen and someone will reach out to you this week. With that said, I want to introduce Alex for our message today. Hi there, Reunion. Um, I'm Alex, and I have the privilege of occupying your video screen this morning. So thank you for tuning in and for being part of our community today. Now, this morning, we are kicking off a new series called Family Reunion. And before you add us, yes, we know that we called our outdoor gathering last week Family Reunion. And I know it's confusing to call two things the same thing. But look, like sometimes, like you just got to follow your heart. And our hearts were telling us that we need to call this thing Family Reunion. And really, there are so many reasons for that, though. I'm not just, not just being silly. You see, this series is going to be, you know, a, a round of talks that's going to be a bit different than what we normally do uh, in our Sunday messages. So for the next nine weeks, we will, you know, fingers crossed, open up scriptures and talk about Jesus. But we're also going to be taking some space to talk about us as a church community. And, and I just want to take a second to appreciate why we really need to do that. You know, look, we, we all recognize that a lot has happened in this world in the past year and a half, right? The landscape of our society and our culture have shifted in dramatic ways. And the trauma and the events of these times have left deep marks on all of us. And while I hate to say it, the, the spread of the Delta variant also means that we're probably not out of the woods yet. You know, so much has changed and so much might still change. Yet... We are also at this point as a community where we might be able to regather together again in person. And as we learn more about COVID-19 and more and more people get vaccinated, you know, things are slowly perhaps starting to open up. And so at this moment, this kind of inflection point, we have to take a second to take stock, you know, of who we have become and who we are called to be as a community. In fact, you know, this moment kind of reminds me of this really old and, and really beautiful story of St. Anthony. Uh, Anthony was born in the third century in Egypt, and, and when he was a young man, he decided to kind of just take Jesus, Jesus at his word, and he sold everything he had, and he gave it to the poor. Uh, and at that time, people like Anthony, they would embrace this super ascetic lifestyle, and they would kind of live on the outskirts of human settlements, and they would devote themselves to prayer all day long. But for Anthony, though, that, that just wasn't enough for him. Like he, he needed, I guess, to like really be alone with Jesus. So he decided to travel outside of the town and he sealed himself in a cave for about 13 years. I guess, you know, he had some things to pray about. But I guess after 13 years, things started to feel a bit 
too comfy for Anthony, and so he decided that he needed to go even further into solitude. So he traveled out into the middle of the desert. He found this old abandoned ruin of a fort, and he sealed himself in for 20 years. Literally, he did not leave. People would throw bread over the wall to him so that he could have enough to eat for 20 years. And while I know that might seem strange and foreign to us, like, why would you do that? This life that Anthony chose was, was not just about punishing his body and, and solitude. See, Anthony chose to be alone with God because he believed that that was the most essential way to serve the world. And he was busy as he was alone in that ruin of a fort. People would come, find him out in the middle of the desert, and they would camp outside of his fort, and they would ask him for guidance, and they'd climb up on ladders and, and talk to him, and he'd yell back his advice. And, and when people camped outside at night, they said they could hear the sound of a great battle taking place inside of the fort as Anthony prayed and battled with the forces of evil. Eventually, though, right, the cow crowds kept coming, and they kept begging Anthony to guide them, to show them this way of life. And so after 20 years of seclusion, Anthony opened the doors of his ruined fort and began to teach his followers. He eventually traveled all throughout Egypt, and he established monastic communities wherever he went. After all of that solitude, it had prepared him to change the world for Christ. Yet, you know, in this story, there's always been this one line that, that has stood out to me. See, when Anthony stepped out of the fort, after 20 years, people were amazed. Because, as it says in the story, he had the same habit of body as before. In other words, he, he looked the exact same. After 20 years of being alone, of being trapped inside, of being half-starved for friends, for food, for entertainment, Anthony was the exact same. It was like no time had passed at all. And as I reflect on that line, on that story at this moment, I can't help but wonder, you know, how do we look as we start taking steps out of our pandemic-induced solitude? You know, do we as reunion look the same or have we changed? You know, in short, who are we now? And that's a big question because, you know, we've been through a lot. Like, I'm not saying that we're battling armies of demons like Anthony, but we've had our own battles. You know, COVID shuttered our locations. It forced us online. And the community and the gatherings and the rhythms that so many of us depended on for spiritual health were taken from us. And they were taken from us right as our country began another round of unpacking its own messy racial past. Right since the summer of 2020 up to now, protests over police violence and racial injustice have continued to call attention to the ways that our national community has not lived up to its own values. And we as a community have also had to wrestle with and address the ways the church has often been complicit in that terrible past and sometimes continues to stand in the way even when it doesn't intend to. And then, you know, just Running off a list here, there was the election, the insurrection at the Capitol, a spate of violent attacks against Asian Americans, several mass shootings, terrible wildfires, and guys, I'm not trying to make light, but scientists finally started churning out monkey-human hybrids this year. Look, and I know, like, that's not as serious, and nowhere as near important as all the things that I just mentioned, but there are like a dozen movies which tell me that we cannot sleep on that, okay? So just put that, put a pin in that. And look, also, you know, just to get really specific about us, we also had to deal with a major pastoral shift in the middle of all of this. Last October, our lead pastor chose to step down from leading our community. And, and while we love him and continue to hope and pray for the best for him and his family, you know, that shift, it was not an easy one to deal with as a community, as a staff, or as an elder team. It spurred a lot of soul searching and a lot of really good, but sometimes really hard conversations. In some ways, this series is a chance to really unpack what has come out of those conversations in this past year and a half, so, so please stay tuned. But I want to take a second here at the beginning and to reflect on all that turbulence from a different perspective. See, when people told Anthony that they heard the sound of battle, he told them to be courageous, to stay calm, 
because the sounds were just a distraction from the truth of God's faithfulness. He would say that and he would remind them of what Paul said in 1 Corinthians 15. See, like us, Paul was writing at this hard time. He was being attacked for his leadership style. People were questioning his status as apostle. You know, the world that he'd worked so hard to build felt like it was being ripped away from him. And in that moment, he wrote this candid, beautiful line. By the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace to me was not without effect. No, I worked harder than all of the apostles, yet not I the grace of God that was in me. Not I, but the grace of God that was with me. That's beautiful. Not me. It was never me. It was God all along, holding me up, pushing me forward, guiding my steps. Not me, but God. Now look, we've been through hell, and we might have to go through a bit more hell. But it's times like this that we need to remember one of the core truths of the gospel. We are not, nor have we ever been alone. Throughout this pandemic, the protests, the injustice, and the indecency, God's spirit, God's grace has sustained us, been working in us, fighting for us. And as I reflect on my own experience, I know this to be true because I've seen that grace at work in action through all of you. I've watched as members of our community have stepped up and to lead hard conversations about race and justice. I've I've watched as group leaders log in every week to encourage people that they can't hug. I've watched as new people have gotten connected to our community despite never having met any of us in person. And I've watched as we've donated thousands of dollars in items to families in need. And lastly, I've watched as staff and elders have bent over backwards to hold this community together and to move it forward by the grace of God. You know, you might say that this was just a bunch of people getting by, you know, doing their best with a tough situation, but I just just can't see it that way. What I see in each sacrifice, each act of kindness, each moment of compassion is a glimpse of the good news of Jesus. I see a community who is still committed to journeying with people as they find their way back to God. In the midst of this horrible, awful, no good year and a half, right, we've been confronted almost daily with the brokenness of this world, and yet God's grace has met us and carried us through and spurred us to continue on in spite of all of it. So much has happened, but we are still here because God's grace is still here. And if we can embrace that truth, the truth of God's never ceasing presence, then we are taking hold of the core message of our faith. Because when God looked down into the mess of humanity, God didn't just shrug and walk away. No, God in Jesus got down in the mess And he started putting things back together piece by piece. And when death threatened to take it all away, God burst through in a blaze of glory and claimed the last word. We are never alone. God's grace has been, is, and will be enough because not even death can separate us from the love of God. You know, I can't, for sure I can't claim to have lived that truth and every single second of this past year and a half. I don't claim to be a saint like St. Anthony, and the solitude and the separation caused by this pandemic have definitely not done wonders for my body like it did for Anthony, just saying. But here at this inflection point, as we like tend- as we tentatively step out of this ruined fort and I begin to imagine a future together, you know, I believe that God does have some amazing work for us to do yet, and that we are still in the business of helping people find their way back to God. But before we step into that future, we need to take a moment and to re-examine our habit of body. You know, to take stock of all that God has and is calling us to. And so over the course of this series, we're going to take time to talk about our mission and our vision and our values and even our framework for spiritual growth. 
After being so separated and going through so much, we want to take a second and get reacquainted with ourselves. And so this morning, today, I don't have any specific takeaways or any nifty steps. Really, all I can ask for is, is two things. First, if you call Renewed Home, I, I want to ask you to commit to participating with us as we walk through this series. I'm not asking for 20 years in the desert here, okay? Just a few weeks. As we step out of our ruins and into the future, I think that it's important that we are all on the same page as a community. And this series is an important part of helping us do that. Second, and honestly even more important, I want to ask you to get in touch with your inner St. Anthony and spend a little time in prayer. Pray for reunion for your neighbors, for the world, for yourself. Ask God's grace to sustain us and guide us as we tentatively step into this new season as a community. Ask for God's spirit to remind us of who we are called to be as this family called Reunion. And with that, I think we better end in prayer. God, we are so thankful for your constant presence. You know, life can be really hard sometimes. It throws us curveballs. It wrecks our cars. It just makes things really tough sometimes. The squeeze, God. We feel the squeeze. But you are with us. You have not abandoned us, and you, your grace is working for us. We are so thankful for the moments in which we've got a glimpse of your kingdom in this horrible time. We're so thankful that you're calling us to more than just survival. And that we get to be part of this kingdom of God that is here and already arriving. Help us be bold. Help us be courageous. Help us trust in your spirit and to believe that you are calling us to be good news to our world. We love you and we thank you for inviting us and making us part of this messy, hard thing called church. But we are so glad that you have invited us in. Amen. You know, each week at Reunion, we participate in this moment of communion. And, and we view this as this kind of sacred moment to remember and encounter the crucified and risen Lord. You know, if we were together, we'd have the bread and the juice. But I want you to invite you to enter into this moment with whatever you have. So if you need to pause the video to go get elements, you know, please do that. See, when Jesus gathered with his disciples on the night before his arrest, he knew the troubles that lay before him, the, the troubles that lay before his disciples. He knew that they would need to find strength for their journey, to be reminded and renewed by God's grace when times got tough. And so as he sat down to eat with them, he gave them this meal so that they could remember when they were together what it was all about. And so he picked up the bread and he blessed it and he broke it and he said, this is my body. Take, eat, do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup and he blessed it and he gave it to his disciples and he said, take, drink, this cup is the new covenant in my blood which is shed for you. When we eat this bread and we drink this cup, we are encountering the God of the cosmos and the God who cares so deeply for you and for me that he came to die for us. We are encountering a God that is full of grace and truth and is unafraid of darkness and death. We encounter a God who never leaves us and is always working for us. And so when you are ready, I invite you to take the elements and take a moment to encounter that God.
Jesus, you don't owe me anything And more than anything that you can do I just want you And I'm sorry When I've just gone through the motions I'm sorry I just sang another song Take me back to where we started I open up my heart to you And I'm sorry When I've come with my agenda I'm sorry When I forgot that you're enough Take me back to where with a benediction. God of yesterday, we knew you then, your promises, your words, your walking among us. God of endings and changes, what we thought would not end has ended, and we find ourselves here wondering where we are and how we got here and where to go from here. Be with us here in this time of change. Help us place our feet on this ground. Help us lick our wounds. Help us look up and around. Help us believe the story of today, because you know all about endings and changes, and you are not afraid. In the name of our loving Creator, our Savior, Jesus, the Christ, and the Holy Spirit, Amen.